First John chapter 3. Let's do it, read that again. Behold. Now when the Bible says behold, you need to hold that. You need to stay there. Amen. Behold. Be in the state of holding that. Hallelujah. Hold on to it. Don't just flip your eyes through it. That's what we usually do. We just skim through something. But it's saying hold that. Hold on to that thought. Exercise your imagination into that thought. Indulge yourself into that. Amen. Have you seen a geek when he's programming? He gets caught up in, he gets caught up in that program. He even forgets about food. You bring him food, it gets cold, and he's still there trying to crack a cord. Trying to debug cord. <laughs> you can stay there two days, not showering. Smelling. But he's trying to debug that cord. He's trying to get that cord to work. He's indulged into it. Now he's saying, behold. Indulge yourself into this. Pause and think about it. Exercise the faculties of your mind into this behold what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god hold that thought the father has decreed that you are the son of god <laughs> he didn't consult anybody by himself, of his own volition. He called you his son. And we discovered that God cannot lie. Is that right? It is impossible for God to lie. It's not possible. You remember the Syrophoenician woman came to Jesus. And she said, my daughter is vexed with a demon. Is that right? Jesus tried to get her off his trail, and she couldn't. She persisted with her faith. And Jesus marveled at her faith. He said, I've not seen such faith, no, not in all Israel. And he said, because of your faith, the demon is gone out of your daughter. There is nowhere where it's written that the devil was cast out by Jesus. He didn't say, come out of her daughter. He said, the demon is gone. Now, even if the demon was in the girl at that moment, because Jesus said the demon is gone, the demon would have to redefine itself as gone. And that's what happened. Because it's impossible for God to lie. It's not possible. <laughs> They are in a boat and it's being tossed to and fro. Master, don't you care we perish? What did Jesus say? Storm, I rebuke you. What did he say? Peace, be still. And it's impossible for God to lie. So the storm became peace. Okay, we we'll find something else. He said, Peace be still. And the storm <laughs> was renamed Peace. <laughs> and it became still. Because it's impossible. Tell your neighbor, it's impossible for God to lie. What God calls you is who you are. Not what you look like. Not what the world says. Not what your clan called you. Not what is in your passport. What God calls you is who you are. If he called a storm peace and the storm never stood up and said, I am not peace. The storm agreed, yes sir. Why? Because he created everything. <laughs> your creator names you, is that right? <laughs> When you give birth to a child, you name them. Is that right? How much more when you create something? <laughs> it is impossible to lie. Now he's saying, behold what 
manner of love the father has bestowed that we should be. God has commanded that you should be called his son. Not for debate. Saul is persecuting the church. Going from place to place, dragging them out. The Bible says he persecuted the women and the men. That was a vile fella. Is that right? <laughs> no regard for women. On the road to Damascus, Jesus meets him. And says, Brother Saul. He didn't say Brother Saul. He said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Why do you persecute? Not why do you persecute the church? Or why do you persecute? Why do you persecute me? Because that is me. Who are you, Lord? Well, they go through their <laughs> motions. But then he says, go, go on to the street where you came from, but your assignment has changed. <laughs> Amen. Continue with your journey, but your assignment has changed. So he gets to Damascus, and then God begins to speak to Ananias. Ananias says, Now come back face it. You said who? Saul. You said, you don't know Saul. He's converted. He wants us to go there and arrest us. He's speaking from knowledge he has acquired. He's speaking from past experience. What we know about you is your experience in the past. Yeah. We know you by what you've done. Why? The man she slept with. So they are defining you by? That man is a poor man. Why? No man in the bank. Debts. <laughs> He is a liar. Why? His promise ten times are not fulfilled, any of them. So they are defining you by what you did, by your past. But Jesus tells Ananias, go at once. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, go at once. Go at once. Because that man is a chosen vessel. Tell your neighbor you are a chosen vessel. You might not be the chosen one by the constituents, but you are chosen by God. You might not be the chosen heir in your family, but you are chosen by God. You may not be the choice of your village, but you are God's choice. And God said he has seen in a vision a man called Ananias coming to him. So even this, now how many Ananiases were there? There are many. Is that right? <laughs> Praise God. There are many Ananiases. He saw in a vision, what? <laughs> a man named Ananias coming in. So if this Ananias refuses to obey, God will find another Ananias. That the vision must come to pass. <laughs> what turned Saul from one moment being a persecutor, the next moment he's a chosen vessel? The encounter with the truth. There was a moment of encounter with truth. And every one of us must come to that moment of encountering the truth. Not a truth. Where all shadows are put aside. Where all parapets are put aside. Where all facades are laid aside. And you encounter the truth naked. And the truth is a person. His name is Jesus. Jesus. 
Now he said, let's go ahead. That we should be called the sons of God. Did you know that son of God is a higher office than prophet? Okay, let me leave that. Of all that were born of women, none is greater than John. Talking about prophets. But the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed. Not that we should be called apostles. That's good. But that's a job. That's a role. That's a gift to serve the sons of God. <laughs> the office of a son of God is a higher office than prophet. It's even higher than apostle. Because apostle simply means one who is sent, the messenger, apostolos. That's what apostle is. One who is sent means one who is sent. A team that is sent. An ambassador. That's what apostolos is. So angels are messengers. They're sent. But the son of God The role of an apostle is limited. The identity of a son of God is eternal. You don't become it. You are born it. You're born into that liberty. It's yours by virtue of your birth. Not because of what you've done. <laughs> But the Bible says of his own great love because of that great love. Now we are called sons of God. Hallelujah. That's what God calls you. Now you need to reconcile with that. Let's read on. Therefore, someone say therefore. therefore. Someone said if you find therefore in the Bible, you need to find what is therefore. Is that right? Therefore, because of what we've just discussed, sons of God, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Who is the understood subject him here? Jesus. The specimen of the Son of God he's given us is Jesus. Not Elijah, not Abraham, not Paul, not Peter, not James. Thank God for all of them. But the specimen is Christ. Want some more of this? <laughs> so don't blame them if they misidentify you. Have mercy on them. A spoon looks like a spade, but they're not the same. If you find somebody digging with a spoon, have mercy on them. Tokuba, but what day? When the world abuses you, huh? mistreats you, reproaches you, it's because they're ignorant. They don't know us. Because they don't know him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Call you all kinds of names. They don't know you. Don't hold a grudge against them. 
I'm talking to somebody here. Your family member has done all kinds of things to you. They have named you all kinds of names. They have abused. Don't hold it as a grudge. God is going to bless you and don't show them. Don't show them for free. Don't sample to them how God has blessed you. No. They were doing what they did out of ignorance. <laughs> In fact, God blesses you so you will bless them. Amen. He prepares a table for me where in the midst of my enemies and a man's greatest enemies will be members of his household. <laughs> the best way you can deal with your enemies is give them a meal. <laughs> Prepare a party and welcome them and feed them. You have killed two birds with one stone. Number one, they'll stop being your enemies. But number two, you'll give, you'll give the devil a lesson he'll never forget. <laughs> the world doesn't know us. They don't know what to do with us. They are grappling with what to do with us. That's why you should not allow them to define you. You should not allow the labels they put upon you to stick on you. Poor, poor. They don't know you, but they're calling you poor. Because they don't, know you, they don't know you. Failure, failure. They just don't know you. That's why they're calling you failure. They don't know you. Have mercy on them. They don't know you. They don't know what kind of a man you need. They don't know where you're coming from, nor where you're going. You're born of the spirit. The wind bloweth where it listeth. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. So are they who are born of the spirit. You are like the wind. You can't control the wind. When you think that you've constrained it, you realize <laughs> it's blowing from another side. You cannot predict the wind. You feel it's blowing from this side. All of a sudden you realize it's blowing this side. They think they have you figured out, but they are just lying to themselves. The world does not know you. They don't know where you come from. They don't know where you are going. Your destiny is not determined by the passport you carry. Your destiny is not determined by the hospital you are born from. Your destiny is imprinted in eternity. Behold, indulge yourself in this. The world does not know us because it never knew him. Some people said you're Isaiah. Some people said you're Jeremiah. Others said you're one of the prophets. Eh, but this, these miracles are like Elijah. Eh? <laughs> Walking on water, that is like Moses. Multiplying bread. Eh, who is this? Are you John the Baptist come back from the dead? <laughs> Jesus said, my father works until now. <laughs> and I'm also working. Let the talkers talk. We will work. <laughs> Let the works speak to them. Is that right? <laughs> Don't try to defend yourself. Let the works talk to them. <laughs> the more they gossip, the more you work. Let the works that your father does. Let the works talk to them. Who are you? If you knew my father, you would know me. <laughs> because like father, like son. He said, I and my father are one. The works that I do are not my own. The father that dwells in me, he does the works. Jesus is our specimen. <laughs> God wants to do things through you. The reason why your mind is struggling is you're figuring out how you're going to do it. It's not you going to do it. It's the Father doing it through you. It's the Father venting himself through you. It's the Father exhibiting his dreams through you. It is God manifesting his ideas through you. It's the Father manifesting his love through you. It's the Father manifesting his kindness through you. 
That's how you should see yourself. I am not a bag of accidents waiting to happen. I am prophecy being unfolded. Let others prophesy. I am the fulfillment of prophecy. <laughs> Let others preach wonderful messages. I am an epistle that is working. That's who you are. Do you believe that? Say, I believe that. <laughs> the world doesn't know us. It never knew him. He was here 43 years. They failed to define him. Because every time they put a label on him, he broke it again. <laughs> they put him in a grave and said he is dead. They put a label, our food day. He is dead. That's who he is. He's dead. <laughs> Three days later, the tomb said, ah, ah, this one is not dead. I cannot keep him here. This one is not Onosimufu. You find what you can do with him, but as far as I'm concerned, I can't contain this one. He's not the others, he's dead. This one, I've seen all his dead kind of people. This one is not like that. Yeah. The world does not know you because the world never knew him. If somebody can define Jesus, then they can identify you. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to get you to break the limits you've put on yourself. Limits that have been imposed by COVID. Limits that have been imposed by the economy. Limits that have been imposed by the, the colonial masters. Limits that have been imposed by social media, by the world. They have said this is the mold. If you fit here, then you are special. If you don't fit in this thing, then you're not special. If you can fit this description, then you're a beautiful woman. If you don't fit here, then you don't have the right figure. Break those limits off God. Break those limits off of you. The world does not know you because it never knew him. He was God in flesh. Can you imagine God in flesh? <laughs> the eternal God who created heaven and earth entered the womb of a woman and came out as baby. In fact, when the angel was talking to Mary, Mary said, eh, these things are very big. <laughs> How can I give birth when I even don't know a man? Then you said, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, Holy Ghost. Because they know ghosts. They know ghosts. So you tell them, you, the, 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 the closest thing I can tell you, you know ghost? This one is Holy Ghost. <laughs> shall come upon you. <laughs> and this thing, huh? the power of God shall overshadow you. And that holy thing, tell your neighbor, H into that thing. There is a holy thing <laughs> that shall be born of you. <laughs> it will not be a Jew. Uh -uh. It is a holy thing. But you shall call it. <laughs> it shall be called the Son of God. The world does not know you. <laughs> you come from the same origin as that holy thing. You carry the DNA of that holy thing. The same spirit that was in that holy thing is the same spirit inside you. The engine that was driving that holy thing is the same engine that you have inside you. The world did not know him. 33 years, every day was an unfolding of another chapter of what they couldn't define. The Pharisees had a big, they had something on their hands. What do you call this man? The man was born crippled. He was healed by Jesus. And Pharisees came and said, Who healed you? The man said, The man called Jesus. <laughs> he said, That man is a sinner. Give glory to God. <laughs> the man said, Ah, but we know that God does not answer the prayers of sinners. 
That was a man who was born blind. And we have never heard in the whole world since the world began that a man born blind had his eyes open. And Francis is saying, are you trying to preach to us the gospel? You are born in sin, that's why you are born blind. <laughs> the man said, ah, I don't know much. One thing I know, I was blind. Now I can see. And the Bible says they threw him out of the temple. <laughs> The works were speaking to them. Jesus was not trying to defend himself. The works were... I'm telling you, works are going to speak to your enemies. But they see what is coming out of you. But these things don't come from a poor man. A poor man cannot be flying around the whole world every three months for vacation. A poor man cannot own a bank. <laughs> A failure cannot be like that person. No. The works that my father does, they will, they will address them. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, the devil has a handful to grapple with. Verse 2. Beloved, tell your neighbor you are loved by God. Now are we the sons of God. This is the end of all ambiguity about who he's talking about. Not tomorrow, not when we die, but now are we the sons of God. That holy thing that shall be born shall be called the son of God. Let's read on. And it does not appear what we shall be. But we know. You know that? We know. That when he shall appear, he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Which means our functionality and our operation as sons of God is contingent of how we see him. It's contingent upon how we see him. How do you see Jesus? The picture of Jesus you see, the vision of Christ you have, is manifested in the reflection of what we see of you. The revelation of Christ that you have determines the production that comes from you. John says, we are not telling you stories we heard. We are eyewitnesses of his majesty. We were in that mountain. We heard the voice coming from the exceeding glory. And he says, why are we telling you these things? That you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Son and with the Father. So through the words and the witness of the apostles, they wrote these letters not to, not to get more summons. These letters are an invitation to fellowship. The gospel is an invitation to participation. That you should participate in that divine life. That you should participate in that same kind, realm they're operating in. It was never to be that they're up here and we are down here. No, it's an invitation up to that life. Hallelujah. Write this down. Everything God ever did and had it recorded was so that you can do the same. For the things that are revealed are for us and our children. These things were written that you might believe and in believing have eternal life. Those that believe the works that I do they shall do also. And greater works than this shall they do. Why? Because I'm going to the Father. What's the significance of going to the Father? 
I shall shed forth the Holy Ghost. <laughs> pour out the Holy Ghost on all flesh. Not give. Pour. Pour. God does not give his spirit by measures. If you have a measure, it's not because that's what God measured for you. It's because that's what you could receive. He poured. Now it's your capacity that determines how much you carry. He has no favorites. If someone is carrying a candle, it's because that's the capacity they have created. But then God is saying you can carry an ocean. You can be a horse. Why? So you can minister the spirit. In the Old Testament, they are ministering the law. To minister means to serve. They are serving the law. Bagabateka. Is that right? Moses, they distributed. The priests used to distribute. But the way the ministers in this new covenant, God is saying we are distributing the Holy Spirit. That's why you are full of the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to be a minister of the Spirit. You are full of the Spirit. Smith goes used to say, we are crammed with the Holy Ghost. Packed with Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When you move into a place, it's Holy Ghost coming into the place. You are the move of God. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you are the move of God. Ah, you don't believe that. Turn to the other and tell him, you are. God intends that you are the move of God. When you move in, God moves in. When you move in, the atmosphere changes. When you move in, the devil moves out. <laughs> when you come into a city, God has visited that city. Oh, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, some of you here, you move into places, a city, and it will be like a tornado passed through that city. Not that you said anything, but you just moved through it. But what vision do you have of Jesus? Behold the Son of God. Behold, who are you beholding? We have many people today in church who are frustrated. Ministering in church, but frustrated. Why? They're they not beholding the Son. They're beholding the basket. They are beholding the microphone, but they are not beholding the sun. Praying, but their heart is not into it. Why? Beholding the sun. Our ministry begins from beholding. What vision do you have of Jesus? If you can see him as he is, you realize that everybody in church is important. Nobody is useless. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Their value is not determined by how much they put here. Their value is determined by the signature the Father has put on them. Some of the people you see today are worth nothing, but I give you five years. You look at those very people, and their pain will be able to determine the course of entire cities. Behold the son. Behold what manner of love. I need to close this quickly. Let's go in. Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself. Which hope? The hope of seeing Christ. Brothers, Christ is going to come back on earth. Many Christians live like that's not going to happen. Many Christians think of Yaluri. But this was what they lived for. In fact, the apostles expected him to come in their lifetime. That's why they lived the way they lived. That's why they had the results they had. They expected him to return during their lifetime. What would you do different if you knew Jesus is coming back tomorrow? I'm asking you. <laughs> what if Christ was to come back tonight? What would you do? 
Is there any unfinished business? <laughs> now he's saying that's the hope we have. Every man that has that hope purifies himself, even as he's pure. There are magazines people would not read if they knew he's coming back in the next hour. Is that right? <laughs> there are funders and corners people would not go to if they knew he's coming back. There are things people would move out of their house if they knew he's coming back. Is that right? Every man that has this hope purifies himself, even as he's pure. I'm telling you, this is the driving force for the sons of God. This is the driving force. It's the impetus, the traction. That when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Because we shall see him as he is. Let me go quickly here. Verse 11, verse 10. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Is that right? Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. And he says, this is the message that you heard from the beginning. That we should love one another. Is that right? Not as Cain who was of the wicked one and slew his brother. Wherefore slew him? Why did he slay him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Marvel not, brethren, if the world hate you. Is that right? We know that they, we have passed from death to life. Because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Now if there's anything you remember today, remember this. The distinguishing factor, the, the utmost, the ultimate um, defining uh, characteristic of sons of God is the love of God. Yep. Everything is done for that purpose. We were born again because of his love. His grace is shed to show that love. The gifts of that spirit are a failure without love. First Corinthians 13. Even faith works by love. The reason why many people are trying faith and it doesn't work is because true faith. Let me show you in the Bible. <laughs> Do you like this? First Timothy chapter 5. First Timothy chapter 1, verse number 5. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. First Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 5. Tell your neighbor, I am a son of God. Okay, if you're a girl, I am a daughter of God. That's my identity, is that right? First Timothy, First Timothy chapter 1, verse number 5. I'm reading from the Amplified. This is what it says. The object and purpose of our instruction and charge is love. Is that right? The Amplified Classic says, The goal of our instruction is love. The goal of our instruction, the end point that we are trying to reach at is love. It's not power, but love. It's not to feel big and, uh, and, 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 and pumped up, but love. That's the goal. If it fails to achieve that result, it's a failure. This is Paul. Is it right? This is the Paul in the Bible. He's saying the goal of my instruction, what I'm driving at, the end point is love. Not miracles, not signs and wonders. They're all good, but that, that's not the goal of my instruction. I'm not trying to produce miracle workers. No, I'm trying to produce love specimens. Conduits of love. Tell your neighbor, I'm a conduit of love. Channels of love. I'm trying to make them channels of love. I'm trying to transform you. In, why? Because God is love. <laughs> I 
the world will always mock us if they don't see love. Even if they see miracles, which are important, and I believe in them, you be, I know you know that. But miracles won't move them. Love will break them. Think about the Pharisees who crucified Jesus. They saw the miracles. Is that right? You just saw the man who was born blind and he was healed, and they were so hardened that they still didn't believe. Okay, let's think about Lazarus. He was one of them. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. You know what the Pharisees did? They wanted to kill him again. <laughs> A man has been raised from the dead. And he said, watch the cafe. A day cafe. The call of our instruction is love. Because the world is hurting. And today, the world is hurting more than ever before. People are running into church because they're hurting. Hurting people do hurting things. God wants to heal the world through us. We are instruments of God's healing. Get the vision of healing through God's love. Bring healing to homes. Bring healing to families. Be an ambassador of restoration. Don't be divisive. Don't be an instrument of scattering. Be an instrument of healing. Be an icon of healing. Let that be your vision. When you embrace God's vision of healing, you will see his power. I'm telling you, Jesus did miracles, but he was moved by compassion. What moved Jesus to heal the sick was love. Every time Jesus healed the sick, it was love in action. Do you want to see the miracle power of God through your life? Do you want to see more signs and wonders than ever before? This is where you should be working. Manifesting the love of God. Meditating upon being an instrument. There are people who will never be loved unless you love them. There are people in this country who have been abused since they were young. Abused by their very fathers and their mothers. Molested by people they trusted. And the only person that is going to show them a true father is you. The only person that is going to show them a true mama is you. The only person that will show them what a true friend is, not one who is coming for benefits, but a, a true friend is you. That you do good to somebody and you're not expecting anything back from them just because you love them. That's what is going to change them. There are people who have all the money you can dream about, but they have no love. Yeah, in this country. In this country. They have access to everything material that a man may desire apart from love. And if there will be somebody who will give them a drop of that love, they are willing to exchange it for all they have. Let love drive you in your work. Let love drive you as you teach. Let love drive you as you serve in whatever capacity, as you usher, as you sing. Let the love of God drive you because the goal of our instruction is love. Which springs from where? A pure heart. You know what a spring is? It's not a pump. It naturally just flows. Whether you come in the morning, at lunchtime, or evening, you'll find a spring doing what? giving water but a pump you have to you not just in zero no no is that right but love it springs from where from a pure heart pure heart blessed are the pure in heart they shall see God a pure heart Amen. No hidden motives. No ulterior. A pure heart. Who shall dwell in the Lord's hill? He that has a pure heart. You want to be a carrier of the glory of God manifested? Pure heart. Not mixed motives. Not strife. 
Empinga. Is that right? Hmm. Not intrigue. It is sad that these things have to be preached in church today. But we have people who use puppets, but there's intrigue in there. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you like this? Yeah. A pure heart. Number two, a good conscience. I don't care who tells you what to do. If your conscience is not clear with something, don't do it. Because that's the mystery of faith. The mystery of faith lies in a pure conscience. If you can maintain a pure conscience, your faith will be productive. The reason why people can't hear God today is their conscience is defiled. They violated their conscience over and over again. That's why they can't exercise true faith. They are having spiritual heart attacks. What they say and what they do don't agree. So it's not a confession anymore. It's a lie. Because to confess means to say the same thing with your mouth as you believe in your heart. When you say with the same thing, your mouth as you have, that's a confession. But if you're saying with your mouth what is not in your heart, it's a lie. With the heart, man does what? Believes unto righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made. A clear conscience. Guard your conscience. Keep a tender conscience. God will lead you through your conscience. The spirit will bear witness with your conscience. The primary way God is going to speak to you is through your conscience. How are you going to get ideas whether you should invest with somebody or not invest with them? Or you should take up an opportunity or not? Your conscience is the primary place. Is it right? It's the primary place. Because the spirit of God lives inside you. And your conscience is the voice of your spirit to your soul. And finally, and sincere and feigned faith. Is that right? Which means there is unsincere faith. <laughs> there, is un, there is feigned faith. Another word for that is pretend faith. Or pseudo faith. Or fake faith. We don't just have fake everything. There is also fake faith. To someone who doesn't know, it looks like faith, it sounds like faith, but it is not faith. <laughs> it doesn't produce the results because Jesus said you'll know them by. So the fruit of fake faith is not the same as real faith. <laughs> fake faith doesn't produce results. Because it's not sincere, it's not real. It's pretend. It's just doing things because other people are doing them. Because so I'm doing them and shouting. But in your core of heart, do you believe that? What do you believe? Start from what you sincerely believe. From where your conscience is and let it grow. Work from there forward. And that's faith which was moving headaches. Very soon you'll see that faith moving the graves. But if you have fake faith, it will never, it looks big, it looks huge, it sounds great. But it never produces even a small mouse. And somebody after some time gets frustrated. And they drop off along the way. Tell your neighbor, I am the child of God. I am a loved child of the love God. Stand up on your feet.